Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome back to World of Warcraft Classic and our Draenei Shaman leveling campaign. We are starting things off here at the Azure Watch. Got a few breadcrumbs to turn in, so let's take on that first. The light embrace you. Good to see you, I'm glad that we were both able to get our emitters fixed or we might never have found one another. And don't worry, we'll see to it that Amon Vale gets help and supplies. Speaking of assistance, now that you're here, go around and introduce yourself to the others. I know there's plenty to do. May your days be long, and your hardships few. I hope you find something useful. Oh, you must be one of the survivors we've been hearing about. I'm glad that you came. Don't worry, we will send someone to see, Eun see to Eun's leg injury. I'm most interested in hearing all about your harrowing story of survival. You're a brave one to have made it all the way here. Uh, let's take the water. Saved. Also want to make sure that I have my hearthstone bound here. What do you think of my armor? Crafted it myself. It's a little different than what we traditionally wear, but it's extremely comfortable. Poor Dick Dicknia? That murloc gave her quite a scare. Hopefully she will recover from the injuries soon. So I presume you're looking for work. Well, there's plenty of that to be found around Azure Watch. Kind to those less fortunate. Each day is a blessing. You're starting to make a name for yourself, Rambles. How about trying your hand at hunting? Back on Draenor, our greatest hunters would hunt the be a beast that resembled the moon gray stag of this region known as a Talbuck. If you think yourself a Draenei enough, go out into the wilds and kill enough stags to fill your pack with meat. Dionys Aka. I have found that the Lashers milling about on the island hold restorative medicinal properties. Okay, so we're going to bring eight root trapper vines. Alright, so what do we want to do first? I guess we should just focus on getting the Root Trapper Vines and the Moon Grays Stag Tenderloins. We can do that right south of the town. Let's start with that. Let's get to Rock Biter Weapon up. And we will definitely be skinning anything that we find to start working on that. Since this is the first time I've played the Shaman in Wrath of the Lich King, it's also the first time that I'm playing it with the changes that were made to mana and the cost of spells and stuff like that. And already very early on, it, it feels very different than my memory of it, in a good way.
you really feel it when Earthshock misses, don't you? <laughs> it's like a ton of damage that should happen that just doesn't happen. Even Healing Wave doesn't take that much mana at all. I think that's a pretty decent rotation for just questing and keeping all of our mana. Just two Lightning Bolts, Shocking on cooldown, and then melee. Seems to be working for now with that level, guys. So we'll keep doing that. I I, I do want to just keep our mana going as long as possible, and it doesn't really seem like that's going to be an issue if we're smart about it. We might even be able to squeeze in a third lightning bolt and still, like, just regen all of our mana basically right away. Especially if we care to start at max range. Yeah, that just feels really good. Feels really good to hit something with a bunch of spells and then be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with it in melee. That's all the stags that we need. Now we're just looking for lashers. If we see any other stags or anything like this, we're gonna we're gonna fight it so that we can skin it. 
Especially if it's aggressive and in our way. It's kind of the great thing about professions in Classic is like, even if you're never going to seriously do the profession, like even if you're not going to max out your, your leather working and craft the best gear and get the best uh, patterns, having a crafting profession while you're leveling up, it, it really compels you to interact with the game world and interact with the game a bit more deeply. At least in my experience, whether it's having leatherworking and just fighting extra enemies to skin them, or hunting down herbs in little nooks and crannies of the world that you wouldn't otherwise go to, having a profession while leveling up really helps you just engage on a bit of a deeper level uh, with, the, with the world and with the game. And I, I really enjoy it, even if sometimes, you know, we don't always do get the production profession uh, to keep up, but it's always nice having leatherworking or herbalism. We are going to try to do some good leather working here on this character, though. I, I would like to push it as much as we can. Skins are not hard to come by the way that ore is. And the good thing about needing skins is that a lot of times it's worth it just to farm up at your level so you're getting kill experience, too. It's usually easy to find, like, 15 or 20 minutes a day to run around and just fight stuff for the skins. That's it for this one. It does mark on the, our mini-map that there's a quest over here. I've never been able to do this quest. I think it relies on us running into a certain NPC. Uh, maybe a scout. Speak with Exarch Melanus at Azure Watch. Yeah, I don't... I don't know exactly what this quest is about, but I would love to one day be able to do it. Maybe that will happen in this playthrough, but I, I'm not convinced. I, I've never been able to find it or complete it before. I'm pretty sure it has to do with a, a specific NPC that we'd have to come across. Who kind of paths around somewhere. Okay, for now let's head back to Azure Watch. We need to learn cooking as well. Kind of hoping Azure Watch would have more trainers, but yeah, if we want cooking, apparently we have to. We have to go. Oh, we ha we have cooking. I just <laughs> apparently I took cooking and just can't keep anything straight in my brain. So let's get some of the profession stuff out to the bar here.
The Naru have not forgotten us. Alright, so we're gonna get a recipe for cooking from that quest, so that's good. Safe journey. Let's go ahead and learn the recipe. And I think we can use this Moongraze Stag Tenderloin meat for that, so... We're probably gonna want to do that. I really appreciate that we can lay the basic fire without having to have the uh, tinder and stuff. Obviously, like, elements like that can be more immersive, but... Oh man, bag space though. So this is great. Right away we have access to something we could farm up. We, we should probably have, like, been making the spiced bread. Uh, to level, basically, but... You know. It's nice to be able to make other stuff, too. Uh, General Goods Vendor, is he gonna have, like, the stuff that we might need? To cook bread, or we need a trade good sure. vendor for that? I guess we need to find the trade goods vendor. The Naru have not forgotten us. I fear that her health is in steady decline. Let us hope that this ointment will strengthen her spirit. Now to apply the ointment to her wounds. It appears the ointment is ineffective, it's such a pity. There may still be a solution. Come here, Rambles, I will explain what I need. Warm wishes to you. The girl is too far gone for mere ointments to be effective. There may be another way. The forest of Azurmus holds many secrets, one of those being a rare plant known as the Azure Snapdragon that some claim to be a panacea, a cure-all. You can identify the plant by its stark contrast to the other ones of Azure Mist and its need to grow at the base of an Azure Pine Tree. Make haste. Remember the lessons of the past. Okay. We survive. Roma. Also, if we come down here and we fight one of the panthers, I think we get an item that begins a quest. And that turns in right back in town, so we should probably make our first priority just killing one of the cats around here. Because we're going to want to run that right back. I don't know that we're getting back up that. Oh, we can. Okay. Perfect. The crystal you found on the Night Stalker Runt's body appears to be a piece of the Exodar. This may help explain the unusual appearance and demeanor of some of the animals in this region. Alright, like I said, we're going to take that right back to town. You found what? Where? How did such a thing end up in the stomach of a Night Stalker? Could the debris from the crash have contaminated more beasts? I'm not going to make any excuses for what you found. This is clearly our fault. We had gotten reports of crushed crystal fragments showing up in the river to the east, but chose to ignore the implications. 
Now we can either sit around on this island and cry about the tragedy that has befallen this land, or we can do something about it and prevent it from spreading. If you've got the stomach for it, I want you to go back into the wild and kill as many of the infected Night Stalkers as you can find. Blessings upon your family. Okay, so we're going to do that in the same area that we're getting these Snapdragon bulbs. So these guys are a little bit tougher. If we want to stand in melee with them, we probably are going to want to throw down the, the totem. We could also cast an additional lightning bolt to deal some more damage. That might start to get expensive from like a mana standpoint over time. We're probably about to get new ranks of Lightning Bolt and Earthshock pretty soon. I'm certain almost that we'll get at least one of those at level 8 here in a minute. So these are Moongrave's bucks, these are a little bit tougher than the uh, stags. I think we're eventually going to get a quest for these as well. Oh, we have a quest for them because I'm great at reading and remembering things. I'm thinking that we're definitely going to want to level first aid. Yeah, we're definitely going to want to level first aid. Here's what the Azure Snapdragons look like.
Looks like we got a few heals there. That was nice. We don't have any useful buffs or anything like that that we could share. Oh, so this food actually grants us stamina and spirit. I probably just want to eat this to keep the buff up. It's obviously not a huge buff, but it's a level appropriate buff, so... 15 minutes. Level 9 here, it's actually pretty tough. There we go. It's a good fight. Oh, look at this. This is the Draena youngling that we need. Yeah, we need to save them. We don't want them to die. Let's follow them to wherever they're going. Azure Snapdragons, these stags are nothing like tall bucks. Blessings upon you. Oh man, so... They're supposed to have a level 8 quest. Maybe we should just follow them. Maybe they reset somewhere. Come with me. Oh look, they're gonna help us. It's so weird. It even even the tooltip shows that this is the uh, the NPC, but they're just pathing around here. If you guys have any insight into this quest or how it works, I, I would love to be able to do whatever this quest is. We've even now found the NPC, but are still unable to begin or execute on the quest. We have this incoming that I, I really, really don't want that incoming, so I'm going to back this up and put away the totem. I just don't want to fight both these guys at the same time. Uh, that being said, we might be able to avoid this one. Let's see if it aggroes.
And right there is our last Snapdragon Bulb. Also don't have a Rockbiter weapon up. Let's refresh that. Okay, and we're heading back to town. We're pretty close, so I think I'm going to save the Hearthstone for now. We probably won't have a better time to use it, but I am going to hang on to it for the time being. Pretty sure this is our back way into Azure Watch. Well, it's not necessarily a back way. But it kind of is. <laughs> it's a convenient shortcut. I'd like to find a trade goods vendor so that I could uh, skill up on cooking really quick. That would be nice. Stable Master. The Mining Trainer has a quest for us. Shaman Trainer will now have our level 8 stuff. Yeah, you see, here we go. We got new ranks of Earthshock and Lightning Bolt, so that's why we were starting to feel a little bit weak against those level 8 and 9 enemies. Because by level 8, we would have these. Stoneclaw Totem is going to be really useful. Uh, summon a Stoneclaw Totem with 51 health. For 15 seconds, that taunts creatures within 8 yards to attack it. So let's say we pull a couple of additional enemies. This thing will pick up the ones that we're not hitting. So, very cool. Uh, lightning Shield Rank 1. Caster surrounded by 3 balls of lightning. When a spell, melee, or ranged attack hits the caster, the attacker will be struck for 13 nature damage. This expends 1 lightning ball. Only 1 ball will fire every few seconds, lasts for 10 minutes. Only one elemental shield can be active on the shaman at any one time. So that's like, people have explained it to me, kind of like a dot. But instead of putting it on the enemy, we put it on ourselves. Um, so we'll, we'll want to keep that going, I think. And then we get rock, biter, weapon, rank two. Peace for you. So, let's come into our spell book here. Let's replace our spells with the higher ranks. It's going to deal significantly more damage. We're going to want to put this up on our bar. A uh, lightning shield we will put here. Rockbiter weapon rank 2 can come out. And there we go. Never did see a trade goods vendor. Tradesman, here we go. Find something useful. Be well. Oh, we need simple flower too. Okay. I'll figure it out. Simple flower. Salt. Um, am I just missing it? Is simple flower not something we can buy? Where would one get simple flower if not from a trade goods vendor? Maybe a cooking vendor? Huh. Okay, well, I, I guess we are not doing that. Let's go ahead and we can make an egg and we can make our moon grace tenderloins here. And then eventually we'll have to figure out where we can get flour, if not at a tradesman. Don't remember seeing flour at the general goods guy either. But we can definitely check again. Watch as the plant works its magic. Be well. Okay. This should do it. Wake up, little creature. Wake up from your slumber. You are safe now. 
Where am I? What? What is this place? By the light of a loon, Eridar, cursed demons, what have you done to me? I have not come alone. We will fight you as we have in the past. I need to lay down, apparently. Minari, but how? We are not Eridar. She must know. If there are others like her, we must find them and explain. Be a good idea. Open your heart to the light. Prophecy of Velen. The prophet spoke of this day, that on this island, in this new world, our allies would find us. We will be tested. They will ask that we pay for the sins of our fathers. At the time, I did not understand the meaning behind his words, but seeing this creature and her reaction to us, it is now coming into focus. The corruption of our people has been felt even here. Venture south. It is there that we found this being. Find its kin and tell them of our people. Safe journey. Uh, let's check the I could help. general goods guy again here. Now he doesn't have any flour, so Go on. that is out. Arcanon Poros. Uh, let's take the bracers. Do not lose faith. For what that's worth. Uh, it would be a good idea for us to vendor. Before we do that, we probably should turn our scraps into light leather. Of course, we have the one left over. That's fine. Something you like? Alright, yeah, we're gonna need to get a bag pretty soon. In fact, maybe we go ahead and we buy a bag right now. Could be a good idea since we just trained. Let's buy a six slot bag. It's gonna help us out a little bit. There we go. The missing fisherman. In the fevered dreams of our injured guest, she spoke of a fisherman, Kowlin, who was in some distress at Silvermist Isle to the southwest off the coast of Ozermist. With all that's been happening, no one has had the opportunity to look into it, but I do feel a bit of worry. Perhaps there is something you can do. Well, we could eventually swim out there and check on him. I'm probably not going to do this quest. Probably not going to do that one. It's just a lot of running around following a uh, spirit wolf. The Naru have not forgotten us. The Great Moongrace Hut. The buck hides are rugged and strong, making for very tough flesh. Yes, they are. Okay, so we are getting boots. Remember the lessons of the past. Okay, so we can head down to the south. That is kind of where we're being led next. I noticed there's a cooking trainer down here um, at Odysseus's landing, so maybe they will be able to sell us some flour.
good day to you. Cookie wants us to bring him a six a skittering crawler meat. Have a good one. More importantly, <laughs> though, uh, he does sell flour. So that's great. We can probably use the cook fire over here. To go ahead and I want to see how long this is orange for. Like how many skill points can we actually get off of this. I probably should have done that before using any of our actual materials. But if you've been around the channel for a while you know that I'm usually far from perfectly efficient. <laughs> Even when I'm not being efficient I'm still having fun and that's what matters to me so. Sorry if it irks anybody when I do stuff like that. Yeah, we can do this for a while. Uh, the question is, am I going to run out of funds? I wouldn't mind seeing if maybe we could do it... No, we're not going to get it to 50. <laughs> okay, so it's green now. Which, pro which means we probably won't do it anymore. Uh, but yeah, see, now we could have started using our tenderloins and stuff to, to get actual skill-ups. Would have been smart, but that's okay. We're going to be fighting plenty of stuff that's going to drop meat. It's a good start. Just want to get that. Let's go ahead and we'll create a bunch of these uh, light armor kits as well. That'll use up some of the leather and uh, open up our inventory a bit. Chest, legs, hands, and feet. We'll wear these as well. It's just it's a little bit of extra armor for each one. It's eight additional armor for pe each piece. You could wish that they would just speed up the progress bars on crafting just a bit. 100% faster <laughs> on everything. It'd probably be perfect. You say that you found one of our crew and that she's injured? I will send one of my crewmen to your village immediately. Light bless you. I'm Admiral Odysseus of the Alliance Naval Command. Our ship was forced to port on your island due to an infestation of sorts. It's embarrassing to even talk about, but Goblin somehow managed to stow away in the holds of both of my ships. Last night, while most of the crew slept below deck, they struck. Stranger still, they took our navigation gear and jumped ship. They disappeared into the thicket east of here. Will you go in search of our gear? It will make for for a strong gesture. Go with honor, friend. So that is what we're doing first. We can also come down the coast and we can work on the cooking quest. Might as well just do that first. Let's see how lightning shield works out for us here. Now these guys are only level 6. And we do have new ranks of both Lightning Bolt and Earth Shock, so we're dealing significantly more damage. But also we're using significantly more mana to do said damage, so we're going to have to be conscious of uh, how many spells we need to cast here before we just go on and melee. It's going to depend on the level of the enemy, obviously. Two lightning bolts and an earth shock, and then melee feels about right for these guys. We could probably do one lightning bolt, but I don't think it's necessary with our mana regen how it is.
for a basic quest for the cooking trainer, this uh, has a pretty low drop rate, actually. I kind of wish we could skin these guys. It's... it's sad. Yeah. Kind of hoping he'll be able to teach us something, or maybe we can look at him as a vendor again and see if he has a uh, recipe for using the crawler meat for cooking. That would be nice. Uh, we're probably going to turn in what we have to him, obviously, but be nice to get a recipe out of it. So we only need one more piece of meat, but we're getting pretty close to where the compass and the map are at, so we'll take on these last couple here, and then we'll go for the items. And there we go. This may be a two pull. We'll see. It turns out it was not a two pull. There's the map, and then the compass is over here. And back to the landing we go.
since I'm now getting materials for cooking and skinning from fighting animals, it's like even more compelling to fight stuff along the way, which makes it more immersive and actually just more enjoyable to me. Hope you guys don't mind me uh, kind of working on those professions a little bit and also just doing stuff like this where I'm going out of my way a bit for extra resources. I actually really like the feel of that. It helps me just be into the character a lot more. Any luck, stranger? You're a resourceful one. Without our navigation gear, we can't... We can figure out... Or with our navigation gear, we can figure out just how far we veered off course. But wait, what's this? There's something rolled up in the map. Let me see. These are orders from Mogul Razdunk of the Venture Company. According to these plans, they're here to strip mine the island of Crystal Wreckage and then hijack our ship once they're finished. By Bronzebeard's bushy brow. This is why they forced us to land. How could they know our plans? I smell a traitor. I've wondered about this for some time now, but this pro proves it to be true. There's a traitor among us. The plans left behind by the goblins document the conspiracy. Since I don't know who it could be, I'm going to need your help in finding the traitor. None of my crew can be trusted. If this is going to work, I'm going to need a hollowed out tree and leaves. Be careful. Okay, make a little disguise. I am on Everyone else has stuff for us now. While some, may not, while some may look at our current predicament as an unfortunate turn of events, I sense that we are here for a reason. The invisible hand of fate has pushed us in this direction. The reason why will become evident in time. To the west lies an ancient night elf city, how, now in ruin and overrun with Naga. It would be remiss of me to sit idly by as the Naga tainted my ancestral lands. You have shown yourself capable, shaman. Honor my people and cleanse the ruins of their unwelcome inhabitants. Go in peace. What can I do for ya? Precious and fragile things need special handling. The priestess tells me that the ruins to the west are what's left of a night elf civilization. That got me thinking about what my pappy used to always say about night elf ruins. Sonny, whenever you see night elf ruins, night elf relics are sure to be close by. Now what kind of dwarf would I be if I didn't hire the first person I saw to go digging up night elf relics for me? Watch your back. I don't know. I don't know what kind of dwarf you'd be. Hello. Uh, let's turn this in. See you around. How are you? He can teach us some things here. He can he can teach us how to cook smoked sagefish. And sagefish delight. This one requires 80. This requires 175. This one we cannot afford. <laughs> so, there's that. Okay. See you later. Let's cook up the tenderloins that we have.
too shallow. So where can we go? If we walk all the way out here, are we going to be able to cast off the edge maybe? Or can we only fish in like very specific spots? Yeah, we have to be like feet planted. There we go. That's not bad. I don't have any like thing to put on my hook. And because I don't have anything to put on the hook, we're gonna we're gonna probably catch mostly junk, right? Yeah, one of my goals with this character is to level up these professions and uh, see how that feels as kind of like a different, more immersive experience for me. Never really fully leveled up cooking or fishing, so... I'm really digging the cooking because, like I said, it compels me to fight more enemies than I would normally fight. Like, go off the beaten path a bit, adventure out into the wilds. And I like that a lot, and obviously we benefit from getting more kill experience than we might otherwise get, so there's that benefit of it as well. Uh, the fishing, I don't know, I mean, it's really simple, there's nothing to it, it's just a time investment, right? So, you know, I figured I will try to work on these a little bit in every episode. And what I'll typically do is I'll work on them at the end. That way, those of you guys who, you know, you're not really into the professions, you just want to see some leveling, uh, you know, I get that. You can kind of tune out at the end. And that's when I'll try to do most of this stuff, but I might do it throughout. I really do uh, enjoy the idea of getting all these professions going. We're not, we're not catching any, like, substantial fish here, but the good thing is it's still giving us skill-ups no matter what we catch. And it'll probably do that for a little while. What I don't know about fishing, and maybe some of you guys can answer some of my questions about it. Can I fish like 1 to 200 in the same body of water? Or am I eventually going to have to find like higher level bodies of water? And if that's true, how, do, how would I gauge that? That's kind of something about fishing that I, I have no idea. I have no idea if like just the fish we catch anywhere get better as we level up or if I have to be in specific places to catch specific fish. And then the fish we catch it seems like it's already ready to eat. I'm assuming we're also going to be catching the type of fish that we'll use in our cooking recipes. Whenever we actually get like a lure in our catching fish. I think my goal here is to get it to 50 today. And that way we should be able to train the next rank next time we come across a fishing trainer. And there's the one that's just to the east of Azure Watch. So we can always run out there and train. Not really sure where I want to take this shaman yet. Part of me wants to take her to the Eastern Kingdoms and kind of have that vibe of like being a stranger in a strange land. Part of me wants to do Blood Mist for the for the better questing rewards. I think no matter what, we'll do uh, we'll do all of Azure Mist. I want to do a full clear of Azure Mist. I really like it here. It's very picturesque and calming. Uh, and then we'll kind of decide where to go from there. 
Maybe we'll, we'll take her over to Westfall. Well, that is actually, uh, that's actually 50 right there that we just hit. So there we go. There's 50 fish. I have to put fish in quotes maybe because not all the stuff that we caught was fish. Uh, but maybe for the sake of the game it is. What I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm going to hearth us back up to uh, Azure Watch. That way we can get some rested experience before next time. Thank you all so much for being here and for your support. If you are liking the content, leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel if you're not already would help me out immensely. And I would be very appreciative. Until next time, guys, take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back here again sometime very soon. Bye for now.